With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Well, you really have to understand it's got to be some coaching transformation. And we all know that the players haven't changed but how they think, how they deal with criticism and how they go about their training regimen, that has changed. So as coaches, we have to be able to adapt and understand that people are going to do things a different way. Today's episode is from the Lawrence First and Goal Clinic with William Inge, co-defensive coordinator and linebackers coach from the national runner-up, Washington Huskies. As the game of football continues to evolve, so too must the coaching methods and techniques used to develop players particularly in positions like linebacker. A transition from the old school to the new school requires a deep understanding of coaching transformation. Coaches must adapt to the changing mindset, training methods, and external influences on players, which are numerous now at every level of the game. Embracing technology, including social media, huddle, YouTube, and email is crucial for capturing the attention of your players and ensuring effective communication and training methods. And that's what Coach Inge talks about today. While he does go into training linebackers, the ideas he shares certainly apply to coaching any position. After we hear from Coach Inge, we share our winning edge takeaways from this clinic segment, as well as information on how to access all the 2023 Lawrence First and Goal Clinic presentations and get your ticket to the 2024 clinic. What you see on tape is a direct reflection of what you teach and how you teach. Video is important, but if you don't teach well, you're not going to like what you see on your video. First Down Playbook has been helping coaches teach better for 13 years. It allows you to present installs, playbooks, and practice cards in half the time with NFL quality. Coaching tools like video pairing, a player app, practice schedules, and wristband sheets have made First Down Playbook a program management system with everything in one place. If you're in a position of leadership with your football program, receive a free one-week look at First Down Playbook. Call them at 512-814-6158 or visit them on their website or social media. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code COACH24 to receive a $100 discount off the normal $700 First Down Playbook team membership price. Links and the phone number are in the show notes. As coaches, we know that some of the biggest hurdles to our team's success can come from off the field. Your team needs support to tackle the endless list of expenses, uniforms, training equipment, travel, and more. But raising that money can feel like a full-time job. Thankfully, there's Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with your team every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser. With options for online donations, digital discount cards, premium product sales, and even spirit shops, Vertical Raise has top-of-the-line solutions for every fundraising style. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com and we'll get you connected with an exclusive offer on your first fundraiser. It's an honor for me to have the opportunity to participate in the Lawrence First and Goal Clinic. We all know it's for a great cause and I'm honored to be able to do so. And and as we get into it, one thing I want to be able to talk about for us is going to be just going over linebacker skills and drills, just overall development for the things that you have to do and uh, and, and in order to become a, what I would say, an efficient linebacker when it comes to how you move, how you participate, how you play. As we get started, I'm not sure if any of you have had the opportunity to uh, see or come to the University of Washington, but this is just kind of a, an overview of what it looks like here on game day. And it is truly one of the greatest environments that I've had the opportunity to come to and see on a game day. It, it is it is spectacular. Now, uh, when it comes to 
just the overall evaluation of playing linebackers and probably in football and sport, I think that you have to know that there is a transition between the old school, quote unquote, to the new school, quote unquote. And while you really have to understand, it's got to be some coaching transformation. And we all know that the players haven't changed, but how they think, how they deal with criticism and how their training regiment, how they go about their training regiment, that has changed. So as coaches, we have to be able to adapt and understand that people are going to do things a different way. And the biggest thing that we deal with here at the collegiate level is, and everyone probably knows this, but everyone on the outside always thinks that they may know everything about that particular player or what is in their best interest uh, when it comes to the parents, some of the select teams, seven on seven teams, or, or some of the personal trainers, et cetera, whoever they may have with them. And we, we challenge everyone that comes into our program to make sure you just trust what we do. And as it says here, this can affect both sides and it can really conflict the players. If we're telling them something, someone on the outside is telling them something else. Now the player's conflicted if it's not in line with what we want or with what they want. The last thing here is going to be the technology has great benefits. So as a coach, you have to be able to evolve and be able to utilize technology. And I think we all experienced something in 2020 that has given us the ability to do what we're doing right now on Zoom, because in 2020, this never existed until everyone endured the COVID processes and everyone had to adapt to the new challenges that's out there. So we know that the kids understand and utilize different things and different technologies, whether it's social media, whether it's huddle, whether it's YouTube, uh, whether it's email, you have to be able to utilize that to your best advantage as well, knowing, knowing you can try to captivate some of the uh, prospects that you're going to be uh, recruiting. Now, for me, this is where it all kind of started on my end from a learning standpoint. In the end of the day, all we are is teachers. So for me, one thing that I, I really look at is how we teach how other individuals learn and also how I learn. Because in a meeting room, you're going to have individuals from different backgrounds, different statuses that they learn in different ways. You have one person who, when you say it, they can visualize and see it already. You have another person, when you say it, they need to visualize it, so you have to show it to them. You have another person, when you say it, they need to visualize it, but they also need to do it. So you have to understand that you have different guys in your room or different individuals in your room, and you have to understand how they learn, but the learning in your room has to be all encompassing. So I kind of go off of this process. And number one is going to be the demonstration process. And that is going to be more from a verbal or a physical explanation or a demo of it. And sometimes it may be me in front of the room or on film that we're going to have here coming, just like we're going to have here coming up, or I'll bring them up to the front so they can do it. Next is going to be the imitation. That's when they really do it. When we're on the football field and we're really imitating what we talked about. We want to do in the meeting. And I'm going to coach them up on a lot of the fundamental things that we're looking for, for that particular drill or that particular item going to the next phase and this is probably the most critical when you get to phase three of learning that's going to be the correction phase because you have to know as a coach exactly what you want out of that particular drill or that particular segment and you coach it exactly the way you want it and you correct it exactly the way it needs to be corrected because from there that's where all of the habits will be formed and developed during your correction phase, you make that like it's supposed to be. Now you go into phase four, it's the repetition phase. So the player, they know they can go rep it and they can rep this without you being there. If they rep it from your correction phase correctly, you know you're gonna be able to build great habits. If they rep it from the correction phase incorrectly, now you're gonna be developing not so good habits or, or what we say as bad habits. So that's something that I kind of go off of from a teaching standpoint. I really look at just what's called the four laws of learning. When we just look at fundamentals of linebacker play, there's five things that we go about on a day-to-day -day basis. Every day of practice, it's almost like in football, you have some people talk about your EDDs or your everyday drills, or someone says it's like brushing your teeth is something that you're going to do every day. But I call them the Fab Five for linebackers, and it's dealing with the head, eyes, 
shoulders, feet, and hands. And all five of those things in some way, shape, or form were going to work. But I just took a couple of snippets from it all just so at least you can understand what it is. Number one, dealing with the head, we really have to understand it's the mental aspects of this game that will really make you a very good player. Uh, you have to understand that and know that as a linebacker, you have to be prepared to do what we call drive the ship. Also, the second phase of that is knowing that your head is a tool, not a weapon. And some of that will come up once we get into some of our uh, tackling processes, but, but we never do anything when it comes to leading with our head. The next thing is going to be training the eyes. The eyes have to understand how to focus in like a laser on your respective key. For what we teach, we have a primary key and we also have a secondary key. Primary key is exactly where your eyes are. Your secondary key is what your peripheral vision has to be able to feel. Uh, next is going to be your shoulders. We try to keep our shoulders low and square to the line of scrimmage when necessary. Uh, often we're going to be off of the pace or the let's say the tempo of the running back in, 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 in the running game. So if a running back is coming downhill, our shoulders should be coming downhill. If a running back is going lateral to the sidelines, our shoulders should be going lateral to the sidelines. Something that our players hear me talk about in the run game is we should look like the running back without the ball. Now in the throw game, often it may be, it may be dictated off of the quarterback or the leverage of off of some respective receivers that you may be on or someone that you may be covering man to man. The next phase of this is going into your feet, knowing that your feet, that that's where all of your balance and everything comes into play. So you have to have a very good base, understand leverage and the power step and what you have to have your body position like from a footwork standpoint on contact. Uh, when it comes to contacting a tackler, when it comes to contacting an alignment that's blocking you or tight end or anyone that is blocking you, we're off of the near foot, near shoulder process. So we have to have our near foot in the ground and our near shoulder contact. Um, so that, that's the biggest thing that, that we do from our standpoint when it comes to teaching the footwork process, but also having our players understand and know that this is a running man's game. You have to be able to run fast. And what allows you to run fast is if your eyes are in the, in the correct spot and you interpret the information that you see correctly. And last but not least, this is probably where in the last you know, 25 to 30 years, this is where football has truly, truly evolved when it comes to what you do with your hands. It used to be when, when you look at films uh, from the, let's say the early, uh, the late 80s and the early 90s, you may see all linebackers with all kinds of big, big padding on their arms because they were always using uh, flippers. Well, well, that has all changed now because it's all about your hands and your hand placement. So we really put a lot of great emphasis on working with our hands, whether it's working the sled work during the season or working on bodies during the season, or we even work with the difference, uh, the machine that they put on our weight racks in the weight room during the off season, because we're always trying to train your arms and your hands on how you want the placement of your body to be on contact. So these five things are gonna be something that we're gonna work on a day-to-day -day basis in some way, shape or form in just about every drill. Some drill, it may work all five of them. There may be other drills where it just may work three of them or it may work two of them or, or just maybe one of them. But nonetheless, in, in our individual periods, we're gonna be focused on these five things in the end of the day. Now, the next thing that we have to have just on my end when it comes to me being able to see a player on the field and see his reaction on the play or, or, or work through the cycle of the snap or be able to grade him, I have to know how he is thinking. So we have just a formative, what I call just a thought process, and it goes call, alignment, stance, key, assignment, responsibility. And in this thought process, all we're really trying to do is just to make sure we can have everything that's going to be streamlined. And a lot of it kind of is fairly standard, but we just put it in a, in a formative way. So when it comes to the call, knowing the huddle call that you got from the sidelines, and, and that's kind of a two-phase process or a three-phase process. Actually, the huddle call that you got from the sideline, now it gets down to the communication that as a linebacker, you have to make to the defensive line that everyone else that will allow them to be able to get to the next stage, which, which is going to be alignment. 
This, the third portion of that is going to be what you're going to hear from a communication standpoint, the call from the secondary, if you're dealing with some, some kind of coverage. The next thing is going to be our alignment. So we have all of our alignments, just it, it'll always end in some kind of a zero because that means you're off the ball. So it could be a 10, a 20, a 30, a 20 I, a 40 I, a 50, a 70 I, just whatever it may be, but that's kind of the alignments that we're gonna have. And that's always gonna be based off of the call. The stance comes down to, for us, we have our, our linebacker stances are gonna be just a little wider than shoulder width apart. We're not gonna have the extremely wide stance because what we've seen over time, it's hard for you to be able to move. And typically your first movement is gonna be a step under yourself, which is gonna get you to just a little wider than shoulder width apart. So if, if we can minimize uh, any false movement, I think that's something that allows our players to be able to move a little more efficiently. The next phase is going to be your key reaction, and that's having a primary key and a secondary key. So for us, most of the time, if we're in the core, our primary key is going to be the king, the QB running back mesh, and then our secondary key is going to be feeling the O-line window that's going to be in front of us. Sometimes it could be if um, if there is a tight end that's off the ball and the running back is opposite, we could be able to key the tight end and, and the running back. Uh, then just going to be your assignment. What's your job when you have a run at you versus a run away from you versus a pass? And then last but not least, it's going to be your just knowing and owning your responsibility. The, the run came at me. Did I fit my particular gap exactly like I'm supposed to? The run went away from me. Did I fit my particular area like I was supposed to? Or there is a pass that came at me. Did I work in the direction that I, that I was supposed to? So that's kind of the, the, the formative way to where when we push play, we should be able to see this whole thing literally unfold uh, from snap to whistle. So that's kind of a, a formative system that we use when it comes to being able to teach our players how to play from snap to whistle. As we move into some of our drills here, what we just say, just the dominant starts with the ABCs because you always have to have some kind of a warm up. And typically, what we have is we have our in season warm up phases, and we also have our out of season uh, warm up phases. Uh, the things that we do in season, uh, it, when it comes to just the overall activation of all of our change of direction modes. There are some things that we're going to do just about every day, and most of the time it's going to be fairly quick and, and fairly effective. So we'll be able to see some of those, whether it's working on your, your old original agile bags, working on your ropes, or just focusing in on your 4.6 point, 2 point explosion when it comes to how you need to attack some of the block destruction items that, that we'll see here coming up. Then you also have to work on some of your tempo items when it comes to beginning the tackling phase. So there's some things that you can work there. And some of our out-of-phase things or out-of-season things that we have is a, a four-cone box or a star drill. And all this is truly just designed to work on change of direction, change of direction, change of direction. And it's really quick. Um, so that's kind of some things that we'll do just from a dynamic warm-up standpoint. Then some of the hip movements that we're going to see here when it comes to dealing with some of the past things that we'll see is just literally uh, working our hips down the line. We'll be flipping at a 45 and staying on the line the whole time, or you'll flip, flip and open at a 45 and come back and drive on the ball. So there, there's always some kind of element that, that we want that is truly football applicable. Everything that we have the ability to show you that we do in warmups, it will come up at some point in time during a game for sure. You just don't know exactly when it's going to be able to come up. And then we have just some set transfer and drive when it comes to you working on three-step movements or vision on the quarterback movements. And then we also work a boot or sprint out drill as well as a drawn screen, drawn screen reaction. So we'll see some of those here coming up as we get into some of the film. Uh, so, so now uh, we're going to move into just being able to teach some of the tackling elements of everything that we have and and the tackling and takeaways it, it it really happens off of a couple of different phases number one we teach your shoulder tackling just just as an fyi because we always want our head behind from a teaching standpoint but we all know as linebackers in the core sometimes that doesn't happen like that as much as you want it to be so there is a ton of things that we do when it comes to the implementation in the beginning most of the time we're going to be working from a close 
contact scenario, just so we can be able to see, can you be able to get the, the balance as well as, as the timing of you being able to double up or cut your arms and roll your hips through at the exact same time. So as you see here, we'll work some close fit uh, tackle. We'll work some head up tackle. We'll work some bite the ball tackle. We'll also work some punch the ball tackle. Uh, always e emphasizing the double uppercut on the arms and being able to gra grab claw, drive your feet for five. Uh, just as you all know, where you have your near foot, near shoulder, rapid squeeze, drive for five and do everything you can to get the ball carried down to the ground. So there are some things that we have that we use. I, I don't have everything on here, but we do have a popsicle sled that we'll use. It's just a one man, one man sled. We, we will see a door tackle. You'll see step separation that we saw earlier. We'll have step separation. Now there will be a ball carrier in there. So we'll have a step separation door tackle. We'll also have an apex tackle where we're removed from the core. You're coming in trying to make a tackle. We'll also have an in space tackle as well, where you're literally just in space on, on a wide receiver, a very skilled athlete. And we do this two ways. Sometimes we do it against us. And this is the, the beauty of the things that we love because when our, our, our guys want to be more the offensive players, so they could try to show that they got some skills and, and, and ability to be able to change direction. But we'll also do this against our wide receivers and running backs during specified times and practices. Here are our winning edge takeaways and ideas for implementation. One, old school or new school, it doesn't matter. To be successful in this profession, we have to have a growth mindset. That means embracing the tools available to us to connect, build stronger relationships, and best reach our athletes in the way they learn. Two, understand the importance of how individuals learn, and the four phases of learning pointed out by Coach Inge. Demonstration, imitation, correction, and repetition. Build those into your teaching and install of your concepts as you prepare for spring ball. And three, whether they are EDDs or the Fabulous Five, as Coach Inge calls them, developing sound fundamentals is what makes your schemes and strategies work. Those fundamentals should be tightly tied to the scheme and strategy, but it all starts with the fundamentals. The entire presentation from Coach Inge is available now as part of Lawrence First and Goal Premium Membership. That includes all 120 presentations from the 2023 clinic, which are available for you to access until the beginning of the 2024 clinic, plus your ticket to that clinic and year-long access to the 2024 presentations. The link to that is in the show notes. Be sure to go to coachingcoordinator.com to follow all we're doing and sign up for our weekly tip sheet, which shares the best ideas from each episode. And follow us on X at Coach K Grabowski.